Catherine, the P.E. Fairy. Jack Frost Spell. It's time the school days fairies see how wonderful a school should be. A place where goblins must be bossed and learn about the great Jack Frost. Now every fairy badge of gold makes goblins do as they're told. Let silly fairies whine and wail. My cleverness will never fail. Chapter 1 the school inspector. I can't believe that tomorrow is our last day at school together, said Kirsty Tate. It's been a wonderful week. I wish it didn't have to end. Rachel Walker squeezed her hand as they sat next to each other in the school hall. The best friends had loved every moment of the past week. Kirsty's school had been flooded, so she had joined Rachel in Tippington. It's good that your school will be open again next week, but I'm going to miss you so much, said Rachel. They were sitting with the rest of Mr. Beaker's class for an afternoon assembly. Miss Patel, the head teacher, clapped her hands together and everyone fell silent. Good afternoon, everyone, she said. I hope that you have all had a good morning and are looking forward to this afternoon's lessons. Yes, Miss Patel, said all the pupils together. Some of you have already met our school inspector, Mrs. Best, Mrs. Patel went on. She is observing the school today and tomorrow. A lady with a clipboard joined Miss Patel at the front of the hall, and everyone clapped politely. "'I hope that you will all continue to show Mrs. Best what a wonderful school this is,' said Miss, Miss Patel. Just then, Rachel and Kirsty heard the sound of chattering nearby. They peered along their row and saw two boys in green uniforms sniggering and muttering. The girls exchanged a knowing glance. They knew the boys were goblins in disguise." Miss Patel made a few short announcements and then sent everyone off to their classrooms. Look, Kirsty whispered, peering over her shoulder. Mrs. Best is following our class. Rachel looked too and saw Mrs. Best a few steps behind them. She must be coming to observe our P.E. lesson, said Rachel. I hope that the goblins behave themselves, said Kirsty in a low voice. It would be awful if they spoiled things for Tippington School. Feeling anxious, the girls changed quickly into their shorts, t-shirts, and trainers. They then jogged out to the school field with their friends, Adam and Amina and the rest of the class. Mrs. Best was waiting for them at the edge of the field, holding a clipboard. Mr. Beaker was standing beside her, and the girls saw him glancing down at the clipboard. "'Oh, I hope this lesson goes well,' said Rachel, crossing her fingers. "'Poor Mr. Beaker looks worried.' The goblins were at the back of the class, mucking about. Just as they had refused to wear the Tippington school uniform, they had also refused to wear the school P.E. kit. While everyone else looked smart and navy and white, the goblins were dressed in scruffy, bright green shorts and stained green t-shirts. They were wearing baseball, green baseball caps to hide their faces. Kirsty spotted Mrs. Best making notes on the clipboard, and her heart sank. "'Good afternoon, everyone,' said Mr. Beaker, putting on an extra jolly voice. We're going to do an obstacle course relay, so I'd like you to get into teams of four, please. Will you two be on our team? Rachel asked Adam and Amina. Their friends agreed at once. There weren't quite enough children for everyone to have four in the team, so Mr. Beaker told the goblins that they could be a team and do two obstacles each. Mr. Beaker led the children to the course. It looked like a lot of fun. There were all sorts of obstacles and challenges with bean bags, balls, and cones laid out in different color for each team. You have to decide who in your team will go first, second, third, and fourth, Mr. Beaker explained. The first person has to balance a beanbag on their head and weave through the line of cones. The second person must throw the net ball into a basket. The third person needs to do 20 skips with a skipping rope, and the fourth person finishes the relay by crawling under a low net to the finish line. When each person finishes their part of the course, they have to tag the next team member as a signal to go. Do you all understand? Rachel and Kirsty nodded, feeling very excited. They couldn't wait to get started. Chapter 2. P.E. Problems This is a tough course, so it's important to practice first, said Mr. Beaker. I'll give you all five minutes to arrange your teams, and then we'll begin. Rachel and Kirsty's team decided that Amina would go first, Adam second, Kirsty third, and Rachel fourth. Their team color was purple, so Amina picked up a purple beanbag and set off around the cones. Wait, cried Kirsty, you're going the wrong way. But Amina didn't hear her, because all the teams were yelling at the tops of their voices. 
The bean bag slipped off her head, and Amina picked it up again, but she had only gone a few steps before it fell off again. No! cried Adam. Suddenly, Amina realized that she was going the wrong way around the cones. She turned around and headed back in the opposite direction, and then the bean bag slipped off her head again. Adam groaned, and the girls bit their lips. They couldn't help but notice that the first goblin had already reached the end of the cones. Somehow, he had managed to balance the bean bag on his cap without drop dropping it once. At last, Amina reached the end of the cones and ran over to tag Adam. He sprinted towards the bucket full of netballs and grabbed a purple one. He aimed it at the target basket, but it went, it went straight up in the air and came down on his head. Ow! he yelled. He grabbed the ball and aimed it at the basket again. This time it flew over the top of the basket and hit the second goblin on the shoulder. He was fiddling with one of his trainers and gave a loud squawk. The netball bounced off into a muddy ditch. This is strange, said Amina. Adam's really good at netball. He never misses a shot. The second goblin had replaced his trainer and thrown the netball into the basket on his first try. But Adam had to try six times before he succeeded. Pink in the face, he tagged Kirsty, who picked up a skipping rope. She was usually good at skipping, but after just five skips, the rope got tangled around her legs. I can't have jumped high enough, she thought, but when she tried again, she dropped one of the handles. You can do it, Kirsty, called Rachel in an encouraging voice. Kirsty picked up the rope to try again, but after fifteen skips, the rope hit the back of her head and she lost her balance. She felt her cheeks going red. The first goblin was next to her, pulling at one of his trainers. Then he started skipping so fast that the rope was whirled around in a blur. "'What's wrong with me today?' Kirsty muttered under her breath. She looked around to see if the other teams were looking at her, but to her surprise, they all looked just as confused and worried. Everyone was having problems with the obstacle course. One team was still on the beanbag section. Kirsty took a deep breath and concentrated on skipping. This time she managed to reach twenty, although she tripped over her own feet when she ran over to tag Rachel. She glimpsed at Mrs. Best, shaking her head and making more notes on her clipboard. Even though the goblins had finished skipping first, they were both messing around with their trainers. "'It's lucky they don't have lace-up trainers to slow them down,' said Kirsty. Rachel and the second goblin dived under the low net at exactly the same time. Rachel dragged herself along on her elbows. This was something she had done many times, but suddenly she felt as if she had forgotten how to crawl. Her elbows ached, and the finish line seemed to be miles away. The second goblin was already a long way ahead of her. Suddenly, Rachel felt a tug on her foot, and realized that one of her trainers was caught in the netting. Nearby, she could see the other children having problems, too. Some of them were still on the netball challenge. Mrs. Best was shaking her head again and writing even more notes. Just then, the goblin scrabbled under the finish line and jumped up and down, cheering. Mrs. Best smiled for the first time, and Rachel heard her speak to Mr. Becker, Beaker. "'At least some of your pupils have satisfactory P.E. skills,' she said. "'Those boys in green are excellent!' Rachel looked at her foot. It was so tangled in the netting, she knew she couldn't get it out by herself. "'Sir!' she called to Mr. Beaker. "'I'm stuck!' Mr. Beaker had, came over to help her, and Mrs. Best followed him. "'It's almost as if they've never done P.E. before,' she said. What have you been teaching them? Mr. Beaker helped Rachel to her feet, looking flustered. They all have regular lessons, he told the inspector. They all have satisfactory P.E. skills. I don't understand what's going wrong today. We're usually much better, said Rachel. Please, will you give us another chance? Mrs. Best looked at her watch. It will be home si time soon, she said. I will give your class another chance first thing tomorrow morning. I hope things will have improved by then. Chapter 3. Gloating Goblins Mrs. Best strode back towards the school, and Mr. Beaker sighed. All right, class, he said. Let's tidy up the course. Most of the children wanted to help, but the goblins just kept messing about, giggling and shoving each other. Mr. Beaker didn't even seem to notice. Rachel and Kirsty, could you straighten up the cones, please? he asked. The girls jogged over to the cone section and started to neaten them up. What an awful lesson, said Kirsty. I hope that we can do better tomorrow. Mr. Beaker looked really upset. Rachel didn't reply because she had spotted something very strange. A faint golden glow was coming from underneath one of the purple cones. She nudged Kirsty, who lifted up the cone to look underneath it. 
They heard the sound of a tiny whistle, and then Catherine, the P.E. fairy, fluttered out and waved at them. Hello, girls, she called. She was wearing white jeans decorated with red hearts, a pink sports jacket, and a pretty pink ribbon in her hair. Hello, Catherine, said Kirsty. What are you doing here? Queen Titania was watching your lesson in her scene pool, Catherine explained. It went wrong because the goblins have got my magical gold star badge. I've come to ask for your help. At the start of the week, Kirsty and Rachel had met Marissa the Science Fairy, one of the school day's fairies, and she had asked them to help her find her magical gold star badge, which naughty Jack Frost had stolen. The girls found out that he had taken the badges for four subjects, science, art, reading, and P.E. He was planning to start his own school for goblins and teach them all about himself. Without the badges, lessons had turned into a disaster in both the human world and fairyland. But the worst thing was that Queen Titania and King Oberon were coming to look around the fairyland school. Unless the fairies got the magical star badges back, the royal visit would be ruined. Rachel, Kirsty, and Marissa found out that Jack Frost had expelled two misbehaving goblins from his school, and they had stolen the magic magical gold star badges from him. These were the goblins at Tippington School. Rachel smiled at Catherine. We found the badges that belonged to Marissa the Science Fairy, Alice in the Art Valley Fairy, and Lydia the Reading Fairy, she said. I'm sure we can help you find yours, too. Rachel! Kirsty! called Mr. Beaker. It's almost time for the bell. Please join the rest of the class. Quickly, Catherine darted into the pocket of Kirsty's P.E. shirt. The girls hurried over to join the other pupils. Before you all go and get changed, I want to talk about tomorrow, said Mr. Beaker. There was only one team who managed to finish the course today. Well done, boys. The goblins sniggered, but everyone else looked very glum. It's really important for the school that we all do well in front of Mrs. Best in the morning, said Mr. Beaker. Please, could you all try to memorize the rules tonight and practice at home if you can? Remember, the first person has to weave through the line of cones with a beanbag on their head. The second person throws the, the net ball into a basket. The third person must do 20 skips, and then the fourth person crawls under the net to the finish line. Don't forget to tag the next team member as a signal to go. We'll do our best to make everything all right tomorrow, sir, said Kirsty. Mr. Beaker gave her a worried smile. All I ask is that you all do your best, he said. Now I have asked today's winning team to give you all a demonstration. Puffing out their chests and looking very smug, the goblins stepped forward. Rachel suddenly realized that if everyone was watching the goblins, they wouldn't notice if she and Kirsty slipped away. There were some spare cones behind them. As the first goblin set off with a beanbag on his head, Rachel purred her pulled her best friend's arm and ducked down behind the cones. This is our chance to find out where the goblins are hiding Catherine's magical badge, she whispered. Catherine, could you turn us into fairies? Then we can watch the goblins really closely without being seen. The fairy had poked her head over the edge of Kirsty's t-shirt pocket and now she pulled out her wand. I'm glad you're going to be fairy-sized for a while, she said with a smile. It means that I can give you a proper hug. Chapter 4 The Dirty Ditch Rachel and Kirsty felt themselves spinning and shrinking, and when they caught their breath, they were as tiny as Catherine, with delicate gossamer wings fluttering from their shoulders. The three little fairies hugged each other. I'm so glad to have you with me, said Catherine. I wouldn't have any idea how to get my badge back by myself. Don't worry, said Rachel. If, all, if we all choose a place to hide on the obstacle course, I'm sure we'll see something that will give us a clue. Good idea, said Kirsty. I'll go under the net. I'll hide in the netball basket, Rachel replied. What about you, Catherine? I'll slip behind one of the cones, said the fairy. The first goblin has almost finished. I better hurry. She zoomed towards the first part of the obstacle course and landed behind a cone, making sure none of the pupils could see her. They were all watching the first goblin, who reached the end of the cones and tipped the beanbag off his head, laughing. Catherine watched him run up to the second goblin and tag him. Both goblins bent down for a moment as if to check their trainers. But Kirsty could see what they were really doing. The second goblin tucked something golden into his trainer and then sprinted over to the netball challenge. Was that my badge? Catherine wondered aloud. The second goblin threw the netball into the basket with ease, bent down to pull out his left trainer and then tagged the first goblin. Watching from the basket, Rachel could see that he had passed a gold star-shaped badge to the first goblin. Catherine's badge, she said with a gasp. With the badge tucked carefully inside one of his trainer, 
trainers, the first goblin easily did twenty skips. Kirsty was hiding under the low net, and she saw him pass the badge back to the second goblin. "'That's cheating!' she exclaimed. She felt so annoyed that she forgot about hiding from the goblin, and he saw her as he dived under the finish line. "'Fairies!' he squawked. At exactly the same moment the school bank bell rang in the distance. "'Thank you for the wonderful demonstration, boys,' said Mr. Beaker. "'Good luck tomorrow, everyone. Now hurry back to the classroom and get changed. It's time to go home.' As Mr. Beaker and the other pupils hurried away, the goblin swiped at Kirsty with his long, bony fingers. She dodged his hand and zoomed away towards the muddy ditch where Adam's netball had gone earlier. "'Come back!' squealed the goblin. He chased her, closely followed by Rachel and Catherine. Kirsty flew as fast as she could, gasping for breath. If she could reach the ditch and fly over it, perhaps the goblin would run into it without looking. Kirsty flew over the ditch, but the goblin stopped on the edge. "'I'm not getting my trainers dirty for a silly little fairy,' he grumbled. Rachel and Kirsty darted up and hovered in front of him. "'We know you've been hiding Catherine's magical badge in your trainer,' said Rachel. "'Please give it back. It doesn't belong to you.' Kirsty flew over to join Rachel and Catherine. They were all feeling worried. They had to get the badge back soon, or tomorrow's P.E. lesson would be, the, be a disaster. Suddenly, Kirsty had an idea. She nudged her friends and then smiled at the goblin. "'You are really good at the obstacle course,' said Kirsty. "'You must be a really talented athlete.' Catherine looked a bit confused, but Rachel instantly guessed what her best friend was trying to do. Oh, "'I don't think he's that good,' she said to Kirsty. "'I bet he couldn't jump over this muddy ditch.' Kirsty hid a smile. The ditch was much too big for anyone to jump. "'Of course he could,' she said. "'Easy peasy!' "'Nope, I don't believe it,' said Rachel, shaking her head and looking at the goblin. He laughed and puffed at his chest. "'Of course I could jump a silly little ditch,' he boasted. "'I could do it with my eyes closed!' "'Prove it,' said Catherine. The goblin took a few steps back, then he squeezed his eyes shut and took a running leap and landed in the mud with an enormous splash. "'Wah!' he yelled. With filthy water dripping down his face and clothes, he squelched out of the ditch, his trainers oozing mud. "'That was your fault!' he grumbled. "'You put me off!' "'Perhaps you should take off those muddy shoes,' Kirsty suggested. The three friends crossed their fingers. "'Would their plan work?' Chapter 5. A Magical Inspection The goblin shook his head. He sat down at the edge of the ditch and hugged his knees, looking very unhappy. Rachel, Kirsty, and Catherine flew down and landed in front of him. "'Catherine, could you use your magic to make him some new trainers?' Rachel asked. Catherine waved her wand and a pair of glittery green trainers appeared in front of the goblin. They had zigzags down each side and tiny lights flickered around the soles. The goblin's mouth fell open. He had never seen anything so wonderful. "'Why don't you swap your old trainers for these new ones?' asked Rachel. "'I'm sure they would fit you perfectly.' The goblin was already pulling off his muddy shoes. He flung them aside and pushed his enormous feet into the new ones. Catherine dived towards the old trainers and plucked out a muddy, slightly wet golden badge. It instantly shrank to fairy size, and Catherine polished it against her trousers until it gleamed. Yes, cheered Kirsty. The goblin didn't even notice that he had lost the badge. He couldn't take his eyes off his sparkling new trainers. Rachel grabbed Kirsty's hand and they twirled around, spinning into the air. Catherine sent a stream of fairy dust swirling around them and they shrank downwards, growing back to human size. Suddenly they were on the ground, still twirling. We did it, said Rachel. We got the last badge back. "'You've both been wonderful,' said Catherine. "'Thank you from the bottom of my heart.' She gave him each a fluttery kiss on the cheek and waved her hand. Then, in a flash of sparkles, she had returned to Fairyland. "'Now there's just one problem left,' said Kirsty. "'We have to prove to Mrs. Best that we can complete the obstacle course.' The next morning, bright and early, Mr. Beaker's class was out on the school field in their P.E. uniforms. Mr. Beaker had set up the obstacle course, and Mrs. Best was watching them from the side. Rachel and Kirsty were standing beside the goblins and overheard them muttering to each other. "'I don't want to do this any more,' said the goblin with the new green trainers. "'Without that badge, we'll be as ordinary as these silly humans!' "'Let's sneak away and bunk off,' said the second goblin. Kirsty leaned closer to them. "'Just give it a chance,' she whispered. "'This is meant to be fun. You don't have to be the best to enjoy yourselves, you know.' 
The next half hour was filled with squeals of delight, laughter, and cheering. It was a completely different lesson from the day before. Everyone did well in the obstacle course, and Mrs. Bess kept nodding and smiling. The goblins seemed to enjoy it too, even though they tripped over their own feet a few times. "'Good effort, you boys in green!' called out Mrs. Best. "'Excellent work, everyone!' The class helped to tidy up the equipment and then went to get changed. Rachel and Kirsty were last to pile up their cones. "'That was brilliant,' said Rachel. "'I love P.E.' "'Psst!' the girls looked around puzzled. "'What was that?' asked Kirsty. "'Psst!' the girls looked down and saw Catherine peeping out from behind the cones and beckoning to them. Catherine, said Rachel, I didn't think we'd see you again so soon. I've come to invite you to the Fairyland School, she said. We're in the middle of the royal visit and it's going really well, thanks to you. We think you should be there too. The girls looked over their shoulders. The other pupils were walking away from them and Mr. Beaker and Mrs. Best were talking to each other. Rachel and Kirsty exchanged an excited look. They knew that no time would pass in the human world while they were gone. We'd love to come, said Kirsty. A few minutes later, the girls were following Queen Titania and King Oberon around the Fairyland School. Marissa, Allison, Lydia, and Catherine were leading the way and looking very proud. This is our library, said Lydia, opening the door to a large quiet room filled with books. Fairies can come and read the books whenever they want. As you can see, there are always lots of pupils in here. Lots of young fairies were curled up in squashy armchairs, reading or fluttering around the enticing shelves. The king and queen smiled. "'You are running a very happy school,' said King Oberon. "'Every lesson we have seen has been fun and interesting. It makes me want to go back to school.' Everyone laughed and the girls squeezed each other's hands. They knew that the visit was going so smoothly because the school day's fairies had their magical bat badges back. "'Finally, we'd like to show your majesties a gymnastics class,' said Catherine. She led them all to the school hall where the fairies gymnastics class was waiting. When they saw the king and queen, they began their synchronized flying routine. It was incredible. They twirled and spun through the air, performing the same moves in perfect harmony without a single mistake. They're amazing, said Kirsty with a gasp. Just then there was a knock on the hall door and Catherine hurried over to open it. The girls saw her gasp and step backwards. Jack Frost and a crowd of goblins were walking into the hall. Chapter 6, A Demonstration and a Display The school day's fairies were so shocked that they couldn't speak, but Queen Titania step, stepped forward. "'Why are you here, Jack Frost?' she asked in her gentle voice. "'You have caused a lot of trouble for the school day's fairies this week. I hope you have not come to make more mischief.' Jack Frost jerked his thumb over his shoulder at the goblins. These lot are so ungrateful, he complained. I've been trying to teach them all about me and how great I am, but they just don't want to listen. The fairy school has trampolines, piped up one brave goblin. We want to play with all this stuff, added another, waving his arm at the gym equipment. The school day's fairies smiled at them. You're all very welcome, said Catherine. We love finding new pupils. The goblins jumped up and down in excitement and rushed forward to giant join the gymnastics class. Soon they were jumping on trampolines and leapfrogging over vaulting horses. Catherine was a good teacher and she made sure they all behaved well and took turns. Look, Rachel exclaimed, I think Jack Frost wants to join in. The ice lord had been edging closer to the gym equipment. Suddenly he threw off his cloak and did ten somersaults across the mats without stopping. The fairies burst into applause and Jack Frost, Frost grinned and bowed several times. Catherine came over to the girls smiling. I think Jack Frost is finding out that school can be fun, she said, her eyes sparkling. Thank you for bringing us here, said Kirsty. It's been wonderful to see you again, said Lydia, joining them. Marissa and Allison came over too, and they all shared a big hug. Thank you again for everything you've done, said Catherine. We have to send you back to the human world now, but I hope we'll see you again soon. The fairies waved goodbye. Then, in a flurry of sparkles, the girls found themselves back on the school field beside the cones. Mr. Beaker and Mrs. Best were still talking and the other pupils were still walking back into the school. No time had passed at all. Come on, said Rachel. I want to enjoy every second of our last day at school together. That afternoon, all the Tippington pupils gathered in the school hall to present their, their displays. Every class had added different things. Mrs. Best examined all the work and wrote lots of notes on her clipboard. 
Mr. Beaker looks as nervous as I feel, said Rachel, seeing the teacher biting his lip. Maya, Dylan, and Zach's model train was on display from the art lesson, along with book reports from the entire class. Rachel and Kirsty had added a picture of a plant from the science lesson. As Mrs. Best was reading some of the book reports, Kirsty looked around and nudged her best friend. Have you noticed the goblins have gone? she asked in a low voice. They must be back in fairyland, said Rachel. I expect they didn't like our school when they couldn't use their magical badges. At last, Mrs. Best reached the end of the display and turned to face the pupils. She looked down at her clipboard and then gave a big smile. I'm happy to say that I'm very impressed with all of you, she said. Your teachers are inspiring, your work is superb, and your manners are excellent. I'm delighted to announce that Tippington School is outstanding. Everyone cheered and clapped, even the teachers. Rachel and Kirsty hugged each other. I wish you were staying here, said Rachel, holding her best friend tightly. Me too, said Kirsty, feeling a little sad. It will seem strange to be back in Witherbury School on Monday, but it's been a magical time, hasn't it? It's always magical spending time with you, said Rachel, and I can't wait until our next fairy adventure. The end.